Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for attending this uh, session. Uh, I would have loved to be there uh, today with you, but uh, at the same time of uh, this session today, uh, I'll be teaching. So technology facilitates uh, that I can be there with you virtually today. So thank you very much for the opportunity of uh, participating uh, in this conference. And I will uh, try to show you a little bit um, about uh, one of the um, products, uh, digital products of the Framing Clear project. So this uh, part of the uh, session um, is called uh, Creating Clear Materials for Mathematics uh, Content Learning, the Framing Clear Digital Portfolio. Uh, my name is uh, Cristina, Cristina Huertas Abril, of the University of Cordoba in Spain. Uh, here in this slide, uh, you have my email, uh, so uh, you can contact me if you need uh, something from from me. Okay, uh, at the end of this uh, presentation. Okay, so um, this uh, presentation uh, is organized uh, according to uh, five key. Uh, sections okay first uh, regarding CLIL for mathematics uh, then um, we will focus on uh, quality clean materials some key ideas that we need to bear in mind then we will move to uh, telecollaboration and the importance of working together transnationally the digital portfolio itself and then uh, discussion and some uh, conclusions uh, for this presentation okay so let's start First, CLIL for Mathematics Content Learning. Well, uh, as uh, you all know, um, Marsh in uh, 2002 defined CLIL, Content and Language Integrated Learning, um, as uh, those situations where subjects or parts of those are taught uh, uh, through a foreign language uh, with a dual focused aims. Okay? Uh, that is, the learning of content and also the simultaneous learning of the foreign language or the additional language. That is, learning the content through a language and learning the language through the content. Okay, with this combination um, of the two areas. Okay, as we can see here in this slide. So, the language benefits from the content and the content from the language. Okay, so this is the uh, key idea of CLIL. Okay. Uh, when talking about uh, CLIL, of course, we cannot um, forget uh, the 4 C's framework um, created by uh, Professor uh, Coyle uh, and colleagues, okay, in which CLIL uh, is, uh, you know, uh, CLIL has four key areas that are connected, okay, communication, um, cognition, content, and culture. And also there are authors that consider that the context is also essential and it could be considered the fifth C. Okay, so this is um, something that we will need to bear in mind later when we will have to create our clear materials. Uh, when uh, focusing especially on clear for mathematics, um, we consider that uh, uh, somehow there are three languages involved. Okay, first, uh, the first language, the L1, or the main language, that uh, uh, is uh, usually the language of the context uh, the clear subject is taught. Okay, for example, in my content, uh, sorry, in my context, the main language would be Spanish. Okay, then uh, we have a second language. Uh, or the additional language that is the foreign language used for the instruction, okay, mainly English in most of the um, contexts in which uh, CLIL is, um, is used, is applied, okay. But in the case of mathematics, we also have a third language, the maths language. Why? Because um, literature says that uh, maths is a language with a typical grammatical structure, okay, that is rich in, in, in words that are um, only uh, or mainly used in this specific field. But also uh, the mathematical language includes 
uh, additional graphs, uh, additional symbols, visuals, and graphic materials that complete uh, the language. Okay, so uh, if we consider this framework, uh, we can say that uh, when um, using clear formats, three languages should be borne in mind. Moving now to uh, the concept of quality when developing and creating clean materials, okay, there are some fundamentals that we need to take into account. Um, in uh, 2012, uh, Mehisto uh, developed a series of uh, criteria for producing clean learning materials that we reflect on this presentation. Okay, uh, the first um, um, thing, the first issue that um, this author uh, this author mentioned was that it was important to make the learning intentions and the process visible to students. Okay, this was um, what we want to do and how we will do it. So uh, students are also aware of these processes. Also, it's important to foster academic language proficiency. That is not not general English as such, but also the specific language of the uh, subject area, okay, of the content. Also, it is necessary to foster learning skills development and learner autonomy, so that learners can find solutions to the different problems that they may find. Okay, and also, uh, it's also important to consider different types of assessment, not only the assessment from the teacher to students, but also self-assessment and peer assessment. And the fifth uh, criteria is uh, the creation of safe learning environments where, uh, where all the students feel comfortable to participate and to improve their learning processes. Okay. Then we also have uh, connected to the safe environment uh, the importance of cooperative learning. Okay. This is uh, a key issue that we have considered in the development of our uh, activities, especially considering that the interaction uh, among students can help them uh, understand uh, mathematical content. Then uh, authentic language and authentic language use, uh, that is trying to use um, the proper language of the discipline, okay, um, using a uh, realia, okay. Uh, it's also important to foster critical thinking, to foster cognitive fluency through scaffolding, okay, that is a key word in CLIL, okay, and uh, in general also to uh, help students to make learning meaningful. Okay, so these criteria are essential for Mehisto when producing CLIL learning materials. Um, also, uh, in 2000, uh, well, uh, in the decades of the 2010s, okay, uh, Mayer developed uh, the CLIL pyramid that we can see here uh, in the screen, okay, um, in which uh, he set uh, four steps, okay, uh, for creating CLIL materials. Uh, first, topic selection, then the choice of media, okay, considering the study, uh, study skills and also input scaffolding, then the desk uh, design, okay, considering cognition, communication and output scaffolding, and finally, the clear workout. Okay. Why is this important? Because uh, we need to have some uh, pillars um, to work from, okay, when a um, set in telecollaboration contexts, okay, when working together. And uh, before um, addressing this um, uh, part in detail, uh, I would like to uh, highlight that uh, the, the topic, the subtitle of this conference is Partnerships in Education, Collaboration, Cooperation and Cooptation. So that's why I think that the Framing CLIL project uh, is a very interesting example that uh, can be considered for this type of uh, exchanges. Okay, why? Because in the Framing CLIL um, uh, project, apart from the different uh, countries involved, okay, that uh, um, it is um, England, Spain, uh, Belgium, uh, Italy, uh, and Austria. Okay, also we have 
the telecollaboration between maths specialists and languages specialists. And I always say when talking about uh, framing clear that I am not a mathematician, uh, I am a, a, a linguist. So um, the um, collaboration uh, between these two groups of uh, you know, with different uh, fields of expertise are essential when creating this type of specialized CLIL materials. Okay, and now moving to the digital portfolio, okay, the, the, the main or the practical part of this session, okay, this uh, comes to uh, complement the FractureQuest app, okay, that uh, has been presented uh, before. But uh, in this case, we will focus on the digital portfolio. That is a digital product, okay, with additional materials for the video game Fracture Quest, although they can be used without the game, okay, this is uh, something important to bear in mind if we want to teach uh, fractions in a clear context, okay. Uh, several clear tasks are presented in different languages and addressing different issues related to fractions, okay. So they complete the Fracture Quest app, but as I said, um, they can be used without that. Okay. Then, uh, as I said, the importance of collaboration when creating these materials. Why? Because uh, all the materials were agreed by all members of the maths and language teams. Okay, that is something very very important. And also, we have tried to develop a user friendly. Um, portfolio with different types of activities, but also uh, it's important that we have included the rationale uh, behind uh, all the proposals and also it is digital and interactive. Okay, so you only need an um, internet connection to be able to use these, um, these resources. Well, this is the homepage uh, of the digital portfolio for Fractio Quest. Okay, here we can see the three main characters of the game. And if we click on play, okay, we go to the different uh, languages uh, in which the digital portfolio will be uh, available soon. We click on the Union Jack uh, flag for, for English. And here we can see, okay, uh, the explanation of the um, products of the project framing clear. Okay, here a uh, brief explanation. Uh, of the app, okay, of Fracture Quest. Okay, here we can see the different games, the math focus, the, uh, the summary of the storyline, etc. Okay, and then here we have the explanation for the digital portfolio with the different, um, you know, uh, instructions uh, for the different, um, you know, activities that the, that the digital portfolio has. Okay. So, uh, if we go now to the supplementary materials as such, okay, here again we click on play and we choose uh, one of the games uh, that are part of uh, Fractio Quest and that are complemented uh, by uh, the different uh, activities, ideas, suggestions that the digital portfolio has. Okay, so for example, if we go to uh, game number one, Okay, as you can see, everything is uh, online. Okay, here we can see the supplementary materials uh, for game one. Okay, uh, if we click on uh, start, okay, here we can see uh, the uh, table of contents with all the uh, all the activities that this game has. Okay, here we can see the the icons that we used for the different types of um, activities. Okay, these goggles uh, uh, correspond to introductory activities, the heart uh, to core activities, okay, and uh, finally, okay, this uh, Zeppelin uh, to uh, extension activities. Okay, so for example, if we go uh, to the previous page, okay, uh, we can see here uh, some of the activities. Okay, so for example, if we go to the first one, called steampunk, okay, we can see the typical structure of one of our uh, activities, okay, first we have the title, then we have the contextualization, okay, here um, we explain that uh, as uh, the, the game, the um, Fracture Quest app 
uh, is located in a steampunk uh, context, okay, it is um, relevant that students get familiar with the idea of steampunk. Okay, so here we can uh, see the instructions uh, for the activity, okay, and it is very interesting, okay, the rationale behind the activity. In this case, uh, the activity is connected to uh, cooperative learning. Okay, so here we can see a description of what cooperative learning is and some uh, key references that can help um, the teachers uh, know how to do them. Okay, then we have two options. We can click here to go to the table of uh, contents. Okay, or if we go again to another uh, activity, okay, we can also move to the following our previous uh, page by clicking on the arrows that we can see uh, on the extremes. Okay, here uh, in this activity that again, here you, we can see that it's an introductory activity. Okay, um, we can see that in this case, what we have is a series of short video clips uh, from popular films. And the idea is that the students watch these uh, clips, okay, that you can uh, see just by clicking on them and then discuss in pairs uh, and or small groups um, what's behind, uh, you know, this narrative, okay? Again, here, uh, this is connected to uh, cooperative learning, okay? So again, we have the rationale behind it, okay? So let's move now to the following activity. In this case, again, another uh, introductory activity, but in this case, okay, students uh, are expected to work with Cusiner uh, uh, rods or similar digital materials, okay, and in this case, what do we have in the rationale is the use of manipulative materials, okay. So, again, uh, in all the cases, what we have is the title of the activity, the contextualization, the activity itself, and then the materials that we that we may have. In this case, digital manipulative ma materials, okay, that we can see here with the rods, okay, and here a worksheet, okay, with um, what the students uh, have to do in this uh, in this activity, okay. We, we can see here a PDF that can be uh, downloaded, okay, and. Again, we are working with uh, fractions. Okay, so in this case, using uh, quizzical rods, um, answer the questions using the manipulatives or the corresponding digital version that we uh, showed before. And here we can see some questions. Uh, how many one color trains can you make that are equivalent to one broad rod? What colors are they? How many one color trains can you make uh, that are equivalent to one dark uh, green rod? Uh, what colors, okay, and here we can see, you know, the activities that um, the students can can do, okay. So, again, if we go to the table of uh, contents, okay, we can also go to, uh, for example, this is a, a manipulative materials, but the idea is uh, completely different because the idea of this activity is that uh, students familiarize themselves with aspects of uh, steampunk by creating their own steampunk uh, goggles. For this, they have the instructions, okay, what uh, they have to do if they want to create their own steampunk uh, goggles, okay, with the images okay here we can see some of the uh, images okay uh, it is also interesting to show uh, a word search okay that uh, has uh, the keywords uh, of the uh, of the activity okay here we can see okay so we are introducing a vocabulary in an uh, entertaining way. Also, the solution, okay, this is for, for the teachers, okay, so they know exactly uh, the, 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 where the words are in here, okay, you can see it here, okay, and then uh, a final part of uh, true or false, okay, also connected to the activities, okay.
when we are uh, on the home page of the supplementary materials, we can click here on the home and go back to this um, page where we can choose a different game. Okay, so uh, let's now go, for example, to game four. And we will see that we have the same structure uh, of the um, table of contents, okay, that you will see here. Okay, and here you can see again the different uh, icons, okay, that uh, we have for the different activities. Okay, for example, I'm going to show you now the maze of errors. Here, uh, as in all cases, we have the title, the contextualization, and then the activity. And in this case, we have an interactive uh, activity created uh, also uh, in Geniali, uh, in which uh, the students need to solve the different uh, questions so that uh, they can um, get the final code to um, be able to escape uh, the, the maze. Okay, so starting here, Okay, so they need to choose the, the fractions and then they need to create a, a code that uh, when the students know the code that is um, a word, they will need to click on here and uh, write the code. If the code is correct, they will be able to escape the maze. If uh, they uh, don't have the correct code, they will need to go back to the maze of errors. Okay, so this is another type of activity. And uh, in here, for example, what we have is argumentation in mathematical practice. Okay, so these are some examples of, um, you know, uh, of activities that we have here uh, in the digital portfolio. Okay, now that we have seen uh, the structure of the digital portfolio, uh, it would be great if we had uh, the time to design some uh, activities on that. Uh, I know that uh, this workshop doesn't have so, so much time, but I would like to uh, give you the table that we used um, for for the creation of the, of the activities. As you can see here, the title of activity, two keywords, the contextualization, okay, a little bit of why this um, activity uh, should be included, then how the four C's of CLIL uh, are included there, then the description, the statement of the activity itself, the rationale behind the activity, then the materials needed if we need something, okay, um, if we need a, a worksheet or if we need a video or if we need, you know, whatever that we may need, and finally other needs or comments to implement this activity. Okay, so this would be the table uh, that we have used to develop the materials uh, for, for the digital portfolio. Finally, some uh, final remarks, okay, the part that I called here discussion and conclusions. Well, um, in general, there is a need of quality clean materials for teaching mathematical contents. Uh, when we started the project, uh, it wasn't very easy to find um, clean materials for maths in general. Uh, so it's important to continue working on this field. Okay. Uh, again, I would like to highlight the importance of uh, collaboration and telecollaboration between language and content teachers when creating clean materials. Okay, um, because this is the only way that both parts, content and language, can be balanced. Okay. Uh, then, of course, we need to bear in mind that uh, understanding is crucial in mathematics. Okay, and one way to, to do that is through practical, meaningful experiences. And of course, with the adequate language. Okay, if we use a, a very complex language, maybe we can um, hinder uh, the understanding of the, of the content. Okay, and also uh, interactive digital clean materials um, that, well, here present maybe some, uh, some kind of reference, uh, uh, inspiration, if if possible, for teachers to adapt or to develop their own resources. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, your participation in this conference. Again, I say that I would have loved to be there with you, but uh, I hope that we can meet in a future occasion. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, as I said before, here you have my email, so uh, wherever you uh, wants that I explain or comment or whatever, uh, I will be more than happy to, to answer your email. Thank you very much.